All right, so we should be going live here yeah. as we speak. I'm sure you're doing there. It does look like Mixer is online, Periscope is in the process, should be on Facebook and Twitch and YouTube here any second to see what that's out there. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, so I am David Jagno with Upload VR and I'm joined by Ian Hamilton. Yes, Hi, thank you, thank you. And uh, we will be talking about wow. Oculus Connect 5 here today. That's where we've been the past two days. Uh, trying out all the latest VR stuff from Quest, Whoa. from Rift, from Go, um, all the Oculus goodness um, down in San Jose, California. And um, we did get the chance to go hands on with Quest. Did you play all four of the demos? I did. Yeah. Okay, I did too. So we played every Quest demo that Oculus had. Um, I talked to a lot of their team. Um, so we got a lot of Quest news to share with you guys. And. Uh, yeah, we're just going to talk a lot about Quest, everything you want to know. Hey, Zachary on YouTube, what's up? How's it going, sir? Thank you for joining. Um, one thing I'll say about the Quest demos is um, they were all all very controlled. So yeah, yeah. We, we can't comment on how good the tracking is going to be, how good the games are going to be in real life scenarios until much closer to release. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. I think, um, as you can see here in the video that's playing behind us, here I am playing super hot, right? And uh, this is an enclosed area. This is um, very large. It's uh, much larger than I think what the maximum is for the rift room scale, right? If you have three rift sensors, that cable still limits how far you can go and how big your room can be. Um, so this is, you know, obviously like an ideal situation here. There's distinctive features on the walls for it to be very easy for it to track. Um, so, you know, not every house is going to be like that. Yeah, um, movement in the room, uh, there's lots of moving people, um, could cause problems. Uh, outside, we've been, we've been trying to figure out outside. Um, hey Ricky. Um, yeah, hey Ricky, hey Mitch. Uh, thank you guys for joining, appreciate it. <clears throat> so, so there, we don't have one here, but we've got a, I've got the Lenovo Mirage Solo back in my house and it lets you walk outside and use it outside. Um, it's just you're risking um, at any time the tracking sort of forgetting a piece that you needed. So the way the way these headsets understand the world around them is they look for features and then they uh, remember where those features are. Yeah. Well, sometimes the, the way these systems work is they discard pieces that they think are moving. Let me go ahead and get the... Um... This, that's the trailer that we already showed. There's there's one video that shows, oh, here we go. This is a good video. Oh, no, no, I think it was the first one that was the one I wanted. The one that actually shows people in the quest. Yeah, it's this one. Okay. Yeah, so this is, um, this is obviously, you know, their new headset, right? Oculus Quest, this, this is the one we're talking about mostly. And um, you can see it, a lot of the footage here behind us. It is a standalone headset, so there's no wires. You don't need a PC nearby. You don't need a phone. You don't need a console. Um, one thing that people brought up on Twitter to me is that calling it wireless has a different connotation. That, you know, a Vive can be wireless because you get rid of the wire and you have an adapter on your PC. Standalone or all in one. Untethered, you know, something like that. No, this is standalone or all in one. Yeah. We, we, what, that's a very good point about wireless. Um, yeah. One of the one of the videos we'll get to later uh, when it comes up shows uh, just how wireless it is. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you could you could hold an iPad and let it peer into the virtual world. And the only wire in the entire setup is connected to the iPad That's right. to, That's right. to do all this thing. So like, there's four headsets running around, and there's no PC. There's the, the four headsets are the ones creating the virtual world. Yeah. Um, that's that's significant. I mean, there's anyone that looks at that video, it's really easy to make the mistake of assuming that off screen there's computers rendering those worlds right. when it's not. It's the headsets. Yeah, and um, so we have a few questions that have already came in here. Hey, Ramon, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Argentino, is there copy protection inside like other consoles? consoles? Um, I don't fully understand the question. Maybe, Maybe it's a question of like whether it's going to have DRM. Um, as it like whether uh, Oculus is going to have DRM on that okay. platform. Um, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, I think it'll it'll work just like Go. <clears throat> I mean, for the most part. Well, 
I, I spent a fair amount of my time at Oculus Connect uh, trying to absorb as much as I could from John Carmack. Um, wouldn't let me record uh, what he was saying, um, but I, you know, I'm trying to absorb as much as he was saying. And um, he had all sorts of very, uh, of really interesting things to say. Um, and there's there's some really weird stuff. Uh, some really complicated agreements for like Netflix and Hulu and services like that in order for them to allow rebroadcasting of the content that's on their service. Yeah, for example, on my on my PS4, you know, if I plug my Elgato in, I have to turn off HTCP. And that means I can't use Netflix mm -hmm. without that on. And so there's a lot of really sticky stuff like that. And um, so like if you want to, so like the, the feature where um, Oculus Go is going to be able to share its view very soon to a phone nearby, yes. there's always the question of the copy protected stuff and whether that stuff gets uh, shared to a second screen. Right, right, right. So I don't know if that's what you were asking, but it's it's a really tricky question. Um, and uh, just for everyone that, that is watching, I'm not sure how, how well the chat is working on Restream's end, but... Uh, we are live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, um, Mixer, and Periscope. So we have chat on all those devices. But you may not be able to see all the comments if you're watching on only one of them. Yeah. Um, so we have a question here on Periscope from C CVK22, I think is the name. Are we a fan of PSVR? Yes. All right. We, we got a question from Liv. Um, okay. Cool. Asking us, uh, how was Super Hot? In Quest versus the Rift, and this is my favorite question. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. probably what we should spend the most of our time talking about. Sure. Um, I, I confessed something to David earlier that like I like Super Hot. I've, I've gone into it and I've played it, but I hate the wire in VR headsets so much mm -hmm. that a game like Super Hot is not that much fun for me. Mm -hmm. When I'm constantly having to remember, I, mean, I can't turn my body around. This is a great uh, little visual that they put here in the trailer that speaks directly to what you're just saying. With and right here, they show the wires, they show the the equipment, all that's gone. And um, you know, I think with a game like Super Hot, um, it is more noticeable than any of the other demos they had at OC Five. So the other demos they had, they had Super Hot. They had Tennis Scramble, which is a new original game for Quest. They had Face Your Fears 2, which is, I believe, a new original game. Um, and they also had um, Dead and Buried, which is a port of a Rift game, right? So Super Hot and Dead and Buried were the existing games that we got to try on Quest. And playing the game in Quest, Super Hot, I feel like, I and mean, this is in my article, and this is something you agree with, it feels like the definitive way to play Super Hot. Like, it feels like that's the way that game had always been intended to be played. Well, I, I agree with that premise, but there's a problem with that. It's that the developers built these games for wires in mind. Yeah. So every single level, every single swipe is is built with um, the expectation that you're either going to face forward only or um, that's where your tracking is. All your tracking stuff is in front of you. Yeah. And that has a that has an effect on this the gameplay. So like if and here's here is the footage of Super Hot, by the way. We don't we can't show you the actual in headset footage because they didn't have screen set up, but it looks just like it does on Rift. I mean I didn't notice any difference. Um, but as you can see, you know, one of the things that I talked to you about and some other people about is that a lot of people that have played on Rift and Vive and other wired headsets, you do the whole leg lift, you lift your leg up when you turn around. And that's something that I did for a little bit whenever I was playing, but you don't have to because there's no wire. And also just, just as a point of comparison, a lot of people will say that, oh, you know, we already have wireless adapters, we have TP cast, how is Quest really that different? And the big difference is you don't have to be in the room with your computer. Mm -hmm. I can take that, I can play it in my living room, I can go to someone's house, I don't have to pack up to bring VR with me. Well, all right, so the flip side, so this is what I'm grappling with, it, and, I'm, and I understand the concerns on both sides of this issue of, of asking the question of whether Super Hot is as good as Rift. It it's a different game when you can turn around. So in Super Hot, you've got two people coming from opposite directions, right? You've got a person coming from in front of you, and you've got to lean down and punch him in the stomach. Yeah. Then you've got a person behind you, and you've got to turn around and punch them in the stomach. You cannot do that with a forward-facing system right. without 
mentally having to reprogram yourself to like flip the thing. yeah the incremental turns that a lot of games use um you, so what what this system is is teaching us to do is you can forget that the cord was ever there you can forget that whole like thing where you have to step over the cord mm -hmm. it's free and that sounds so cliche to say it's free yeah, yeah. and i understand the true, of people out there who yeah. like defend their the, how many um pixels their uh thousand dollar graphics card is able to push i respect that and understand yeah. it but it doesn't change the fact that i feel freer and that's going to sell a lot of headsets yeah so we have I've, there's a couple questions here i think uh tyler on facebook is asking if it's the same optical quality um so the resolution itself is higher on the quest it is 1600 by 1440. Um, I don't off the top of my head know what Rift is, but the Quest is a higher default resolution. And it's OL, it's an OLED screen. The lenses are like the Go lenses. They're a little better than the Rift. But, you know, that's all the caveat of um, you are playing with a less powerful device. Yes. So the visual clarity is better, but the overall quality of the textures of how many, you know, things can be rendered on screen, what the quality of the graphics are, that's lower. Well, so I'm I'm really not concerned about that. Like yeah, I, I think I agree. everyone that's worried about whether it's going to have enough, I don't know, deep uh, enough enemies. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's the, really the question: whether you're going to have enough people on screen to fight. Yeah, and that's not a, like uh, the number of boxes coming at me in Beat Saber is not going to be the problem mm -hmm. of the system. Like right. I think Beat Saber technically is going to be fine. The question is whether the tracking works. If yeah. graphically it's not going to be a problem to get Beat Saber on. Yeah, I mean, I, I played. We both played Dead and Buried. That that game looked fine on Quest. I, I mean, with a lot of games that you're going to play on Quest, you're going to yeah. be moving, right? You're going to be moving around, and by by virtue of actually having to get up and move, you're you're not going to stand there and really analyze the quality of the textures. And I mean, I don't. I'm not the kind of person that does that anyway. I know there are some people like that. Um, Blair's bringing up the wireless thing. So, Blair, we, we, I think it just makes sense to call it standalone or all-in-one. If you say wireless, yeah. it implies that it once had a wire, and now it's suddenly modified so that it doesn't have a wire. And this is like, yeah. from the ground up, stand on its own, all-in-one. I agree. And when you say wireless, you imply that there's a something off-screen that needed the wire cut. Yeah. Um, um, so we have a question here from Pierre, wants to know how's it powered, how long does the battery last? Um, they haven't told us battery length yet. What's the, um, what's the battery life on Go? So it's this is two, two and a half or so hours. Really? Yeah, about two hours. Um, if you're watching video, if you're playing a game, I think it's like an hour and a half. Well, so that's tricky because uh, they clearly think that uh, this the, that Quest is going to be used for more gaming. Mm -hmm. So it may be oh, even even. That that reminds me. They they told me they confirmed that the Quest has a fan built in. Mm. So it has internal cooling. Active cooling. Yeah, yeah. inside. Where, whereas the Go just has a metal faceplate to dissipate the heat. Uh, it doesn't have active cooling. So that could help the battery life. I would imagine. Um, it is a Snapdragon 835 as opposed to 821 on Go. So Quest is more powerful. Um, it's also twice as expensive. So hopefully that means the battery can be a little better. Well, um, and keep in mind, the, the, all these headsets, they are trying to get as much weight off your head as possible. Yeah. And it is clear that battery life, that's like a where that's somewhere where they can shave off some extra weight. And so if you can wear a battery pack on your hip and run it up to your headset, I, I seem to think that that's going to be a way some people are going to extend that battery life. Under yeah, yeah, just get like an external battery and plug in through the USB-C and you have, you know, you're charging while you're playing and that a lot of people I think will do that because you don't have to worry about a wire um, while also charging at the same time. So, I mean, I, I think that's a good solution. We actually have a, a, quite a lot of questions from Facebook. Um, and uh, yeah, the, Daniel, uh, you're asking about the battery. Uh, looks like sharing. Uh, I'm trying to go chronological. Um, Thomas wants to know about using it outside. If you're in a courtyard surrounded by static walls, um, would be good potentially, but a garden on a windy day with moving leaves everywhere, it would be very bad. I think that's that's a fair 
summary of it, obviously we haven't tried it outside. I talked to the, the I, I think he's the product manager. He told me that they have tried it in all situations they can. Um, he said that um, basically you don't want direct sunlight because that would interfere with the camera's ability to see the rings and track things. And you want definitive things in the environment that it can track as you know static areas to gauge your movement and depth. So, so things like walls um, would be good. Um, like a covered patio potentially, um, but if you're in a field, I think that it's not really going to work because it's just flat and there's well, no. Well, so this happened with Mirage Solo. Okay. Um, is you walk out to a field and as long as it's got features to identify its environment, the headset can figure out where you are. But you look up at a blue sky and it loses all those features. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, if you if you're in a field that has no features for it to find, um, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. Um, so, so two things I want to talk about going back to the super hot question because I think it's so key. Okay. Is tracking. So different tracking is going to require developers to think different about the level design and about some of the ways people interact with their game. Mm -hmm. The question is whether the tracking is actually worse in some respects in, or whether it's just different. And it may, or maybe it's better because of the fact that you can turn around and all this stuff works. The, the reason I bring this up is a game like Beat Saber, those developers are gonna, are, are, are a clear, they appear to be working really hard to get it onto PSVR. Mm -hmm. But we know PSVR has some of the worst tracking of yeah. all the wired headsets. So like, if but you even, make a hundred swipes- even, even in an ideal situation, um, you know, like low light with the, you know, camera placement good, all that stuff. Even if you're in an ideal situation, the PSVR tracking is still um, quite a lot worse than, you know, Rift and Vive. Uh, I think that's, you know, easy thing to say that most people would agree with. So I, I haven't asked the Beat Saber folks this question, but it seems to me that make most yeah. make the most sense that they built this amazing game that scales in difficulty from easy to expert. Mm -hmm. And then if you finish that, then you can mod the game yourself yeah. and add your own stuff to make the game even go to higher levels mm -hmm. of expert. Yeah. And uh, they built that game first for the best tracking systems commercially available, so Rift and Vive. And as long as you've got your tracking set up, they're going to get every one of your swipes, no matter yeah. if, if your controllers are blocking each other, no matter right. what arrangement is happening. So the question is whether a game like Beat Saber and Super Hot needs to make Super Hot light or Beat Saber light well, I mean, because the tracking is so fundamentally different that I mean, you can't compare high scores on. I think I don't think Super Hot light is needed. No, I don't think Super Hot. I think they showed Super Hot was solid enough that yeah. it's it is Super Hot. The question is games like Beat Saber. Um, a Robo Recall. Robo Recall. Yeah, yeah, a lot of leaderboards and. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, developers are just going to have to get very creative with things. You know, because whenever I was playing the tennis game, for example, if, you know, if, if I'm swinging my racket like this, it tracks fine. If I go to hit the ball and I'm looking where the ball is and I hit it, it works fine. But I think what one thing I noticed that's interesting is, uh, I think, do I have the touch controllers? Yeah, here we go. So these are the regular Rift touch controllers, right? So the ring is here on bottom. You hold it like this, and the ring is below your hand. Um, but the Quest is basically, it's like it's upside down. So you're holding it like this with the ring on top so you, of your you hand. You can see David right above holding yeah. with the, the ring in a different yeah, place. Yeah, you can see right there in, in, right the, the, other in the video. So like, um, we've got these sensors actually set up all, all around the space, but those sensors are able to see almost anything David does with these controllers. So yeah. if he like is lining up like a sniper in a game. Yeah, so if you're like holding a gun like this, these cameras come from different angles to see where these are positioned, no yeah. matter what kind of position he gets them in. But because the sensors are gonna be on the headset. Yeah, there's four sensors, so they're in the four corners of the headset. Um, so those have to see the ring at all times for it to track the controller, so if I, for example, if I were playing something where, you know, a, a good example would be like the gallery. If you're like picking something up and examining an object, you might turn it over in your hand. But if I do that on Quest and I flip the controller over and it can't see the ring because it's on the bottom, it disappears. So while I was playing the tennis game, I did this. I took the racket 
I flip my hand over and it vanished. And when I flip it back, it was there again. And so I think there are some games where um, that you do more, you know, finite, you know, interaction with things that might struggle because of that. And um, but the, on the opposite side, a good thing about the tracking is that unlike Windows VR, where there's just two cameras here on the front, there's four in the corners of the headset. So even if in VR I can't see my hands because well, they're over here. Well, let's talk about Dead and Buried because yeah. uh, the Dead and Buried demo that's up there now. Can you go back to the beginning of this video? Um, yeah. So this video is really important, and I, I want to break it down for everyone here. Um, uh, whoops. Where did it go? It's all jumbled up. Um, and we'll get to, so we see a whole bunch more comments coming in, and we'll get to them. The video that we're seeing here is uh, the Dead and Buried Arena in the innovation area of Oculus Connect 5. And uh, the iPad is able to see what's going on in, in this virtual world. So the locations of all of those headsets are being shared with the iPad. Now, and they basically set it up where the iPad is like a seventh headset that has a window into um, virtual reality. So the iPad has like the map of the virtual world and then um, it gets all of the changes that are happening. And so you can see the camera view in the bottom left-hand corner of the iPad. I'm yeah. blocked, we're blocking it right now. Yeah, um, right there. But the, uh, the iPad is seeing into this virtual world, and then all the players are playing with each other. 3v3, three, three on one side of the room, three on the other side of the room, and they're, they're battling with each other. Um, all those lines you see all over this space helps the tracking. So uh, what we talked about, where if you go out into a field and it can't find any features around you, and it might lose you, the hands or the headset might get lost. Um, that is solved uh, or helped by all of those lines you see all over this picture. So what you're more or less seeing in this demo is the absolute best possible scenario for Oculus Quest tracking. Yeah. Um, you bring the Oculus Quest into your home. Maybe you've got a glass window or a mirror or something that, that fools it. Mm -hmm. That's This whole space is arranged so that the Oculus Quest's four cameras can really see where it is at all times, no matter where you are. I, lay, I laid down behind those boxes. When I did my playthrough, that guy where he's standing, I laid down there on the ground and started shooting over the boxes. They let you do that? They told us not to lay down. I, they told me not to run. You're such a rebel. I didn't run. You're a rebel. All right, I like it. Well, all right, so the reason I had, I felt like I had to try this, so the reason I brought it up was because they also mentioned that in this testing area, they're using the four camera sensors to uh, find the outline of your body and then bring your body into VR. So That's me right there. Um, these four cameras are, the bottom two cameras, I assume, are able to see down and see some of your shoulder and leg movements. So when you see, like, David there in the video um, get down on one knee or people, like, crouching and getting into position, those four sensors on the headset are apparently also being used to identify your body position. Mm -hmm. And so that's why this looks so impressive as it does is because they're doing that experiment at the same time yeah. that they're doing all these other so experiments. It, I mean, it solves a lot of the issues that... A traditional VR IK has to deal with, right? A lot of the, the guessing you do where, oh, the headset moved down six inches, I think they're bending their knee. Now you don't even have to guess, right? You just know um, that's what the player is doing based on um, the camera's actual ability to see them. So that's, that demo, the video we just watched is, I've, I've had time to process it more. I've said it was one of the most impressive VR tech demos I've ever seen. I'm gonna call it the most impressive tech demo I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, just because uh, right across from it, it's fun. It's, I'm glad we're showing this now. Um, the boy was right across from the this this dead and buried quest demo, and the void is you can go pay thirty dollars at downtown Disney or at uh, Disney World in Florida, and you can go inside and and basically fight Darth Vader a little bit and and, and you know go inside um, Star Wars. Um, it's thirty dollars per ticket. So if you want to go through with three friends, it's going to cost you one hundred and twenty dollars mm -hmm. to spend fifteen minutes in VR to have like 
an experience where you feel like you're a, a rebel in the Star Wars universe. Yeah. Well, part of the reason I think that's so expensive is because of the equipment installed. They have to put cameras overhead that cost $1,500 or $1,600 each, and they have to mount them every few feet. So, like, a void yeah. probably has dozens of cameras I mean, that cost $1,500 each. It's crazy to me because I think with, you know, a company could buy a dozen Quest headsets and reasonably launch a VR arcade. Well, but you'd have to, you'd have to make your arcade have all of those features. So you, you have to... Yeah, yeah, I mean, like the arena, like they did. Just they can have mirrors. But yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, if you have a, a developer partner that can create a, you know, same room multiplayer VR game like that, I mean, that that's really, really powerful. So the, the, that the $30 lowers the barrier cost. to entry so yeah. much. So I, when you start doing the math on these things, like, that's why it matters so much that Super Hot and Beat Saber, those two games and a lot of the games like it, um, of that caliber, need to run at 100% of tracking quality. I don't think visual quality is as important as some of our PC-loving readers would make it out to be. We understand, we, we, we fully understand how important a powerful PC is mm -hmm. for making a, a beautiful world. But the tracking quality is what matters to me and yeah. I think to a lot of the developers well, I, I out there. Uh, I, would, I would agree with you. I, I would definitely agree that. Um, so just to answer a few simple questions. Um, Sherwood on Twitter is asking if they can spend 400 for a complete VR system. I would say, yeah, that is what the quest is. You spend $400, you get a headset that has better resolution than the Rift. You have great lenses. It has great audio built in. It's got two touch controllers, it has six soft movement. You can move around the room. It is a complete room scale VR experience without the need for any other devices. I think that's, yeah, well, I mean, that's exactly controllers. The controllers are part of the device. Oh, yeah, but you but, get it with them. Yes, yeah, 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 it's yeah. part of the system. Um, uh, Ricky on Facebook wants to know how the audio is compared to Go. Um, I think they said that the bass is a little stronger, um, but that's, that's pretty much the only difference. It, it, that's going to be one that's hard to like they're they're clearly trying to make a more premium device than go yeah and they're trying to make a device that brings so much of what makes the rift great to a standalone system I, i'll go so far as to say i've been watching this industry for long enough that unless google or one of the other major companies really steps it up it really does look like Oculus Quest is going to be the leading headset of 2019. I I, I could th definitely see that world. Yeah, there's a lot there's a lot still to be announced, and, and I won't under underestimate how Knuckles, as soon as those arrive, um, will could still push innovation forward as yeah. far as room scale design and just interaction of being able to release and grasp more. More realistically, I think that could still push VR design forward and, and give inspiration to developers to keep innovating on the PC. Mm -hmm. But I still think, unless Google, and, and Google seems the only one that has the content to give Oculus a run for its money. Well, uh, oh, no. Sorry, Valve, sorry. Valve, the content, oh, okay. Valve okay. hasn't announced its three games, and yeah. it's going to, but like, that's going to be a whole different pricing category from. Mm -hmm. Four hundred dollars. You can have. You can spend eight hundred. The math is just mind-boggling. Eight hundred dollars, and you've got a multiplayer experience in your living room. Yeah. Whereas last year, sixteen hundred dollars was a realistic price point for a PC and a headset and yeah. a display and the whole shebang. Um, and that's one. And that's one. And yeah. you can. And you can't have your friend. You have to say goodbye to your friends and family <laughs> in order to enjoy a VR headset. And now we've just have the price and allowing you to enjoy it with the family. You just... So just, I want to try to get through the easy questions. Um, so screen sharing will be coming. I think they said if it's not at launch, it'll be right after. It'll be just like the Go screen sharing is. Um, using an external battery should work fine like it does on Go, but we haven't confirmed or done that ourselves yet. Um, those Both those are from Daniel on Facebook. Late to the show on YouTube, how about internal space? 
Uh, the default model is 64 gigs. Uh, there will be a larger model as well, but they haven't talked about that yet. Um, yeah, so external battery pack, we, we talked about that already. Um, casting is going to kill battery life. Uh, Pierre on Facebook, that's, that's correct. Yeah, I would imagine that if you're casting, that's going to drain the battery faster than if you're not. Um, Chris on Facebook. And Wi-Fi, anything that uses Wi-Fi yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. is going to be a, if, if you, Like, for example, if you're playing Beat Saber alone, you could turn off your Wi-Fi and other features you don't need, and just that probably extends your battery a little bit. Probably. Um, Chris on Facebook, what AAA or AA games can we expect other than the three announced? Uh, that's a great question. I um, I talked to the product manager. This I haven't published these uh, quotes yet, but um, he told me that I believe that I'm paraphrasing that um, they want to bring all of the top Rift games to the Quest. So I don't know if that is like does that mean that they just went onto the Oculus Store and found what the best selling games were? I don't know what that means exactly, but we do know Robo Recall's coming. We know Moss is coming. We know Vader's coming. We know Robo Recall is confirmed. Yep. Uh, we know Super Hot, Face Your Fears, um, Dead and Buried. Um, so we know almost almost 10 games, and they said over 50, so there's at least 40 more to be announced. Um, the trailer that... Let me see, where is the trailer? I saw a question up there asking us if we, if we are fans this of PSVR, trailer. and we are. Um, yeah, so let's analyze this trailer real quick. This will be a fun exercise. So as you can see there, that's a hammer. That, that looks like Thor's hammer. He, she oh, was slicing wait, 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 a spear. We missed it. Go back. This was a uh, spear slicer coming to Quest 2019. Oh, that's not Beat Saber. That's no, a spear. It is. That's a spear. It's not a cube. <laughs> that's so, a cube. That, yeah. Those are different shapes, right? They are. They yeah, are. That's not Beat Saber. And those look like boxing gloves. I would imagine Creed is going to be on Quest. Oh. Those are magical shields. I played Creed right before driving to Oculus Connect, and I was sore for two days. Yeah, I only played two two matches with him, and I was sore, and I'm very embarrassed by it. So I'm admitting it openly, publicly to the world that uh, that game is intense. Oh yeah, and uh, a good. And workout. I beat the crap out of you. We did. Yeah, twice. Uh, yeah, because you want to punch, right? You've got to punch. <laughs> And so these are magical shields. Um, this could be the unspoken. It could be wizards. It could be a lot of different things. Um, I don't know what this is showing. I think six it's off. just yeah, it's just an example of six off. So you, you can actually, if you pause it there, we can show the That's six off. That's tennis. Like, but yeah, those the when you, people talk six off, they're talking about six degrees of freedom, being able yeah, to so go up, down, left, right, and forward, back. Yeah, yeah. It's the forward, back that go and gear can't do. Yep. The forward back. The positional is what they call it. Positional tracking. Um, so this is tennis. That is... We, we played that one. That's tennis scramble. Um, so that's showing the audio is built into the head strap like Go. You don't need headphones, but you can use headphones. There isn't. There are headphone jacks. Um, that's showing, you know, no wires, no computer, no phone. Uh, that looks a lot like Hulk fists. I would say Marvel is... Smashing. I would say Marvel VR is probably coming to Quest. Uh, more tennis. We've already seen that one. Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel's one of the characters, right? Yeah, she was like the one of the first ones. When, when does Captain Marvel come out? Uh, that's I believe it's this year. No, no, no it's next year. Oh. Oh, okay, yeah, interesting. More Hulk fists. Look at this. If that isn't a confirmation of Marvel VR, I don't know what is. Yeah. Two clips of Hulk fists and Thor's hammer. I mean, come on. <laughs> the climb, though they announced the climb. That was confirmed. So That's the obvious. climb is also coming. And climb is one of the best ones as far as visual quality. It is. Right? I'll be I interested to see, to see that they, one. Yeah. Um, so, she's dancing. So. So Captain Marvel comes out March 18th, 2019. March 8th. So like, they can put Marvel Powers United VR into a standalone headset in between Captain Marvel and Avengers 2 being released. Avengers 4. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, th th yeah, I mean, Thanos so too. March eighth. So the rift that came out when April, March April one, March twenty. Okay, so I mean, the quest is probably going to launch around that same time, right around the same time as Captain Marvel. That's interesting. Yeah, okay. I'll, okay. I'll, that'll be fun. She's dancing. I don't know. Maybe that means um, one of the. Well, they, they talked about that studio that did La Paris. Um, Mm. Didn't they? I think who partnered with them for some game? Fire, fi Firebird. Firebird. Yeah. So maybe maybe that's related to that. 
Um, but it, yeah, that one you watch dancing rather than it's was that a, dancing. That was a tennis strike. Okay, this one's interesting. This could be uh, tied into space. That could be. I'm not sure what exactly that she's touching asteroids, but I mean that could be anything. It's. Oh, that that's got to be the unspoken. Yeah. That's yeah. A, that's a, a baseball, I guess. Yeah, a tennis ball or something. So tennis was oh, an interesting. There, one. That was a fruit. Okay, I want to point this out here. Rec room. I'm not sure if this movement would actually work. So that's that's actually one thing I wanted to debate. See was that? That yeah. Beautiful. Her controllers Perfect. are behind her. That headset does not know where those controllers okay. are. Okay, but can the software assume that that's the motion she's making? I see what you mean. So yeah. like this is one of the this is one of the fights that are going to happen over the next nine months, as people start digesting a lot of this more. So when it's not about graphical quality. It's not about bringing the graphical quality of a PC title down to this headset. It's about making that work, that exact motion work, 100% as well as the PC version. Because if it doesn't, there's going to be a fair number of developers that are just going to keep working with Knuckles and going the Valve route and building so, for SteamVR. You know, one thing that a lot of people are bringing up is they want to know a comparison. So I. I think on stage, Carmack said in terms of like processing horsepower, it's comparable to a PS3. But, but the resolution is much better than the PSVR. So even though the texture quality might be lower, there will be a crisper visual look. So it, it kind of balances out, in my opinion. Like a game like Super Hot looks better on Quest than Rift because it's clearer. You don't have the screen door effect with all the, the black and white environments. You can just clearly see everything. It's a tricky thing. Yeah, yeah. So, it's I, really hard to compare the two because one thing is better and one thing's worse. So it's kind of, it's hard to, to compare them side by side like that. Um, let's see. Yes, Stormland on Quest, what do you think? Do you think that's likely? Uh, no. Really? No, I don't think so. I don't think they could put that on Quest. I, I think Unspoken would be on Quest. So I, one of the but sessions, I think they want Stormlane to sell rips. I don't think they'll put that on Quest. Hmm. Is it? I don't know. It's 2019, so who knows? Maybe. Um, let's see. Hector can't wait. I agree with you, bro. What about Oculus Quill? Yeah. So I asked about um, who's that from? That's from Gus on Periscope. I asked about those non-gaming um, programs like Quill, Medium. Um, venues, um, rooms, all that stuff. Um, I just got a non-answer. All they said was, we're looking at bringing everything to Bottlebot. They're not going to talk about that yet. I would imagine, I think Quill will be excellent, but didn't that team get disbanded? Aren't they no longer up No, I think Quill is still being done. Okay. Um, it, you're thinking of Oculus Story Studio. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Story yeah, Studio. Story Studio game. made Dear Angelica using Quill, but okay. Yeah. And they kept the tool alive. Um, so... The one thing there, though, is that, that uh, I wish we could get uh, Nathan, uh, uh, it was Sculptor VR, I wish we could get them out here, because um, Sculptor VR is a sculpting program that's available on um, almost every headset right now. And it's a, so it's a little bit like Medium, which is the other Oculus uh, creative app. And uh, you can build a voxel world, a, a world that looks very much like a Minecraft world and shape it by cutting the world with your hands. Um, it's a lot of fun to kind of have, a, have an explodey, because like he's built missiles and other things that you can use to explode the environment. Mm -hmm. And um, they've also got scale in that game, so you can resize yourself to be this big, and your, mm. your competitor is a giant, and you can fire little missiles at your competitor. Right, right, and, right. And it gets at that favorite fun part of VR that's, that's messing with the scale of things. I see. Um, but that runs on all platforms, and that engine, I mean, clearly they put a lot of work into that engine to make it run on all available VR platforms. Um, Quill is, it appears to be trending towards a professional tool, and I don't think they're going to want to pack that down. Um, I don't know, but it's a good question for their team. I, I maybe. If, if one of the members of that team sees this conversation, please let us know on Twitter and answer to that. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Um, let's see. I know we have other questions coming in. Uh, one person wants to know about um, elevation. Do, 
do you think the tracking would work if you were to climb on top of something or you know something like that so mixed reality that's let's not let's not debate the term mixed reality but that video that we have playing behind us that shows david in the arena and all those other players um that is also a demonstration as as Ooh, jamie jamie felton from upload fruit ninja Ooh, that would be a good yeah, one that could have been yeah. a, that could have been the swords too it could have been yeah um but uh sorry i lost my train of thought um the arena was showing mixed reality as Facebook defines it. So those boxes and those boxes were represented as boxes in the virtual world. So the idea long term is that you put these VR headsets on and not only does it figure out your location uh, using the features of the room, but it uses uh, image recognition algorithms to identify, okay, that's a desk, that's a chair, that's a dog. Those are all the elements running around your room. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the obvious next step is then to incorporate those objects into the experience somehow. Yeah. And let you know as the player what you can't physically interact with and what you can physically interact with. So um, if it knows that your couches are something you often sit on, it should let you sit on them when you want to, right? Like, um, so you should get some kind of like heads up in VR. That couch is a real couch. Go ahead and go sit on it. Mm -hmm. um, we're not too far away from these systems automatically figuring that out just by looking around your room. It reminds me of that scene in Ready Player One where the woman is standing up on top of her couch and she's using that as kind of a cover point That's and a, everything. I love that you brought up Ready Player One because I kept thinking of the scene near at the end of Ready Player One where the kids are running down the streets in their yeah. VR gear. Yep. Yep. And we saw that in the arena. Like, yeah. I know it wasn't as fast. I know it wasn't out in the real world running down the street. Yeah. But it was a standalone headset and it did a lot of what we were seeing. At least as a tech demo. It wasn't mm -hmm. something that um, it was is commercially ready, but it's, it's close. <clears throat> It's clearly being worked on, and it's clearly the end goal. Um, we Facebook. have a question here from Dave Station about versus PSVR. So once again, it, uh, the resolution is higher, um, but I do think the uh, power is lower. It's not going to be as powerful as a PS4. Um, let's see. Well, Mixed reality well, request. Explain that. What, what do you mean by that? I mean, just internally, um, it's the processing power is not as strong as a PS4. So it won't draw as much... Uh, yeah, so it won't objects. be able to display as many, you know, polygons on screen. You can't, you know, have as... So instead of 10 enemies, maybe have 5. Yeah, or 10 at a lower resolution or something like Less that. Less detail yeah. to the characters themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. We need to release a Rift 2 soon, is what Lightbringer says. All right, all right. I'm not convinced that they're going to make a Rift 2. I think they absolutely will. I'm convinced that they that's still on the drawing board, that they're still pursuing it, mm -hmm. that they're still working on it. But I'm I think there's a chance that this headset could be so pop popular that it forces them to redo their product lines. Like why would you go? Okay, and so you agree that right now, Zuckerberg and company are probably developing or thinking of the next iteration of the world. Absolutely, I don't but think that's changed. The quest could be such a breakout success. Did they reevaluate their entire strategy? Is that what you're saying? I think it's a possibility. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I know that anecdotally here, just like personally, I have friends that have messaged me during OC5, friends that I didn't even know knew what VR was. They probably didn't until this week. And they wanted to know if I thought the Quest was as good as it looked. They wanted to know, like, should I get one? I have friends that want to know if they uh, should sell their vibe and get a quest. Let me admit something, okay? Did you yeah. see the color ones, the, the uh -huh. purple and, and orange ones? Yeah. I refuse to admire how pretty those colors were because I wanted it so bad, right? Like, I literally, <laughs> like, oh, those are pretty. And I like, look away from them because, like, it just means I have to wait nine months let's, to get that, let's pull up that, that video. pretty. We have a video that shows those. Yeah, you can see these. The, we're wearing the orange ones here. 
and they have uh, I think it was like a purple blue color charging in the background. So that they were they had these all set up um, on a table behind where this is being filmed, and they would swap them out with each playthrough. So they would take all these headsets off, go put them and plug them into all the power cords, and then they bring the blue or purple set out, and the pe next set of people would play with the uh, the purple set. But they're, they're, they were pretty, and they're the right form factor. And, like, yeah. I spent so much time waiting for the wire to be cut that, like, just looking at those pretty headsets sitting there made the want a little bit worse. And I, 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 did, I, don't, want to, I don't want to acknowledge that they're, they're that good-looking, and, and I want them that bad. Chris has a good suggestion. Star Trek Bridge Crew. That would be a good one. <clears throat> so I've been thinking about that a lot. It's, it's all these games that have dead communities or like really hard to find communities um like how much life might be breathed into games again yeah that might have died or might have struggled because the community just it's hard to find players to play with and that going back to the 800 dollars thing yeah two members of your bridge crew um sitting all four members of your bridge crew could sit together in the actual positions of the starship enterprise yeah and and you could talk to each other without any stupid voice chat across the internet causing you um, issues. And that $1,600 is, I mean, like, what four-player gaming experience can you have? Well, what's the best four-player four gaming experience you can have for $1,600 in your own home? I mean, it depends on the person. I'm sure plenty of people would say, oh, I just want to play StarCraft. I want to play Overwatch. I mean, it, it depends, but... I think That's, I think this is universally appealing. All the games that you're going to be able to get yeah. on here are going to yeah. So like you're, you're talking about a niche. This is not a niche. It's not going to appeal to a niche. Yeah, I think um, so. T there's a couple questions now. People are asking about Go about Rift about the future of those headsets. So I think Go, I think has a is pretty safe. You know, it seems like that's Carmax thing. He loves the Go. He's already talked about future well, iterations and plans and things he wants to incorporate. Um, obviously, things can change. They could just reallocate and assign him to a different team like they've done before. Um, but I do think, you know, I think the Go has a place. It is not a gaming-first device. They made that clear from the beginning. Um, I think, what did Carmack say? That the Go is 80% non-gaming, 20% gaming, and they want the Quest to be the reverse of that. Um, they, so, think, they think it might be the reverse of that. Yeah, they, they feel like they complement each other very well. You know, I think if you have a Go and a Quest, you're $600, you're getting the vast majority of the best VR out there. I mean, you're not going to be getting the high, 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 ultra high end, but, I mean, you're hitting a lot of great stuff. And th for that price, you get two headsets for less than the price of a lot. And you still need a computer for a lot. And so that I, I feel like there's a, there's like a, a wave of PC upgrades that mm -hmm. we still have to sort of get sure. priced down. So like That's true. by this time next year, a VR ready computer could be a lot cheaper because you don't need the newest hardware anymore. Yeah, and so yeah. there's there's a lot of price reduction that can be hap that can happen in PC VR if some people just decide to package it better. Um, it's just HTC is in the middle of shipping their wireless unit um, and. What did we hear? That, that, that I mean, it's not running on laptops. It's we're hearing reports of, of problems um, yeah. with that wireless unit. <sighs> that's that's not a good. It's not a good. You can't have problems with that. Um, yeah. Oculus can't have problems when it launches. Um, and I think that's. I think that's the real question. Is like everything we tested was in such a carefully controlled environment. We, we want I mean, that, that's always my problem with these events is, you know, the the questions that people want answered, we can't answer them because... We, we I, want to answer them yeah, as much as you do. I, I was tempted to just run out the door and go outside and see if it worked. Like, yeah. I wanted to do that so bad. Yeah. But obviously they're not going to let me do that. And We'd like to um, come back next year for Oculus Connect 4 and we... Running outside might put that in jeopardy. <laughs> Even though yeah. I think we have a defensible position that, like... They wanted to know. It was so immersive. You know, I just, <laughs> it's yeah. not my fault. I got too scared. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, let's talk about that one. Face Your Fears 2. So that was a demo that was about five, ten minutes long. 
you walk around outside, you try to go inside a house, you can't, you need a key, you go to a shed. There's a lot of spiders, lots of spiders, a lot of jump scares, um, lots of cool interaction. You know, you pick up a hammer, you throw some stuff around. Um, and then there's a moment where you have to go back and open up the door to go in the house. What happened at that point for you? <laughs> All right. So I went through every scare of that thing, and I, I did not scream, but I yelled. I, okay. I will describe it as a yell. Okay. Um, and uh, I got to that house, got to the door, and I'm standing on the porch of this door. And in that particular demo, you can use the thumbsticks for locomotion. So you can use the thumbsticks to move around. Yeah. And I'm standing on the porch, and I've just decided that I, I'm not going in the house. I, I, I'm, I know that they're going to scare me in that house. They just scared me in the shed. They scared me at the fountain. They scared me at the car. Like, they scared me four times already. I jumped. I yelled. I'm not going to go in the house. I noped out. I took the headset off said thank you. <laughs> that was the... That was... Yeah. Just so you're aware, that was literally the end of the demo. I know. Once I you open the door, it. there's one more scare and it's over. I wasn't going to let it happen. You couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Okay. The spider. I respect, I respect that. All right, so the spiders start off small. They did. And yeah. then they get bigger. Yeah. And then they jump on your face and, like, you've got, I've got all these strategies I can use to defend myself against the horror. Like, just close your eyes, look down. You, you look at the world around you and think, what is the trigger? The dev... The dev has figured something to trigger this monster. Yeah. What is it? And you just, you know, you look around and I think it's maybe once I pick this thing up, right? Yeah. yeah. And so you try to grab it real fast and all those <laughs> things. But yeah, that's that was my experience. I remember um, was... the first time I played a chair in a room Greenwater on Vive. Um, this was must have been almost two years ago at this point. Um, there there was a room that I was about to walk into. And this is a room scale game. You know, it's a lot of actual movement around the room. And I I knew what was going to happen. I had a torch. I leaned over and tried to light up the room to peek in. I closed my eyes, and I walked across my room. And then I heard the scare happen. Still got me, but not as bad. So I physically, that's the thing about VR, is that as opposed to a normal game where you just press forward on the stick, or you just, you know, you can look away from the screen, whatever, you're inside of that experience. So you have to physically opt in okay. in a way that you don't with a normal game. So I, I've talked about this being the best tech demo, right? The only competition I For could, Dead and Buried, you mean? Yeah, the Dead and Buried yeah. arena with a large scale, let's, all of the things going on there. Again. Um, but let me compare it to what's right across the street, which is the Void experience. So like mm. right behind this, yeah. this arena is the Void experience. So the void is a backpack. That was the actual void. That it, it wasn't quest or anything, right? It was no. Like, it was it was okay. the void, and it was their secrets of the empire experience. So that's they're charging thirty dollars per, per ticket for the secrets of the empire experience, uh, all over the world right now. Um, so the void uh, is the state of the art for arena right now, and what we're seeing here is is the future of that. Um, this is not a consumer product. No, right. this is a tech demo to show what could be potentially be possible. I think they said they even had to go in and lift some of the tracking restrictions that are part of the consumer device to allow this to happen. Um, I don't think out of the box, I don't think Quest will track an environment this big. Mm -hmm. um, so this is not a consumer experience, but it, um, they, they are reporting Dead and Buried. That is coming to Quest. The normal Dead and Buried is. This is just a tech demo version of that. Um, I forgot why I was going to talk about this, but the, the difference between these two experiences is extraordinarily important because it, it, it shows us what the next couple of years are probably going to look like. Um, you can do this wirelessly with a PC nearby, but as we've seen, all the glitches you can have with a PC are a huge impediment to VR. Steam VR audio issues, install issues on Oculus. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I heard reports from devs complaining that um, they're getting bad reviews in the Oculus store because of glitches in the install process of physically putting, of, of like it, just putting a piece of content on your computer that requires extra resources beyond the install. Mm -hmm. Like whenever that pop up comes up and says, you want to allow this? Um, I'm hearing reports that that's causing problems for devs and actually resulting in bad reviews to their games. Oh, and because people about, see it as a software glitch when really it's the, the platform. The platform itself uh, and the path that people have to go through. Like, 
all those people who must have returned VR headsets in the first two years just because the sensors were such a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. um, it's just all that needs to go away in the next generation. And I this this headset looks like it's really close. I, arena scale is not going to happen um, right off the bat. But they're showing that it may be good enough for that with more development time. Yeah. Um, let's see, any other questions? Um, Mr. Square Peg, hey, what's up on Twitch? Uh, let's see. There, there's some discussion of asynchronous space warp 2.0. Um, so that's coming soon. Oh, and um, Elizabeth mentions, uh, did they wipe them down? I think they wiped down oh, yeah. most headsets between yeah. uses. Every station I went to, I, I, I think I remember noticing that they always did. All right. So Alex is bringing up uh, high-end headsets. Uh, it makes sense to have high-end headsets for the niche market. Um, I agree. That makes sense. And that's the only reason why I think they're still going to pursue Rift. Mm -hmm. Is a Rift 2 may go for that niche high-end market. And it may be the first product that I think Facebook is going to try to make a profit on. Every, I think all of Facebook's products, consumer products, are priced such a way that they can't be beat. That that they want to be the best product at the lowest price point. I mean, they have possible. Money. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as they can afford to like take a loss in order to um, get these things out, I think they're going to do that. Um, eventually, though, if and also just to be clear, like as a company, I would imagine that if if they're not, Oculus is probably close to being profitable just on software alone because they have so many exclusive software deals. That's a really interesting question. Oh, I would love to know, like, the, the, what does their balance sheet look like? You know, it's like, expensive. I mean, yeah. All those people. So that, that's what gets me. All right. So yeah. Oculus Connect was, was the, the people that came out on stage were Mark Zuckerberg. Before you go, there's two just really quick questions. Um, Nathan, dev kits, I believe you can start requesting as early as October is what the blog post said. Um, and Mr. Square Peg, um, they have active cooling inside the Quest with a fan, so it should be cooler than the Go, I would imagine. That being said, it is a more powerful chipset, so that, I don't know, it might be a wash. But um, they didn't feel warm for me. Those demos were going all day long, and they did not feel warm, which is a good sign. Yeah, I mean, highly controlled, of course. Yeah, 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 of course. It's a good sign. Yeah. Um, so you're saying Zuckerberg got on stage and... Well, so no, it's just, uh, the people that got on stage were not the original founders of Oculus. They were right. Mark Zuckerberg, Hugo Barra, and... Yeah, um, Palmer's gone. Palmer's I, I ride was not on stage, and Nate Mitchell was not on stage. And they were around. I, I tried to find them, but I just kept missing them. Mm -hmm. um, but it's... The person... The, the, the earliest person there that's at the highest level in the organo organizational structure is John Carmack, I think. The yeah, user um, before a brush, right? It was close. Mm -hmm. uh, it, yeah, I think he was before Abrash, and then there's Ruben. So it's like the first three high-level ex executives are like Abrash. Yeah, Ruben wasn't at OC5. Yeah, he was nowhere to be seen. The, he was in VR. Oh, yeah, that's and, true. And I wanted to talk about that, because, like, it was just... He, he said he couldn't make it for, for a personal reason, um, and uh, it, was, it was weird to see him in VR, like, talking to me. So in one of the demos... Um, there's a tennis like orb that comes up to you and talks mm -hmm. to you, and it's Jason Rubin's face on this orb telling us about this game. Um, I don't know; it's just weird to see him in VR, but not in real life. And I felt bad <laughs> that like he wasn't there. Um, so, hope everything's okay, Jason, and uh, hope to see you at next Oculus Connect. Um, but yeah, it's just weird to see a person like all these people that were there early on were just not the people explaining the next phase of this. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think of Carmack a lot, and I, why I spent a lot of time trying to understand what his motivations are now and what kind of weight he has to express those motivations within the company. Because from the very start, Carmack has been about mobile. And that apparently looks like the direction Facebook is taking VR. So, yes, you still, like they, they clearly said in their keynote that there's a category for Rift powered by PC 
where you still need to do the absolute extreme regarding VR. Mm -hmm. But there's two paths. You put Virtual Link in a standalone headset so that it optionally can connect to a PC for more power. Yeah, which is what people are talking about now. And Oculus has told us Quest does not support that. Absolutely not. Yeah. Because as we understand it, everything has a cost. If they put that in, in Generation 1, it probably would have added weight, heat, would have caused some other kind of problem. Um, so, yeah, Virtual Link isn't in the standalone, isn't in Oculus Quest. So, um, maybe they use Virtual Link in Rift 2. Well, all right, so going back, I think they can upgrade Rift really easily by expanding field of view somewhat, putting a higher res display, um, and then doing inside out tracking. Um, so putting those four cameras on the corner of the rift and then uh, getting rid of the sensors and then the rift becomes an even cheaper Oculus Rift. The question, and, and all those people that were, you know, getting mad about the graphics before now realize what I've been talking about. Like, is the tracking quality of going inside out with rift gonna allow all of those games that are on Oculus Rift now to play exactly as well or better than the first generation Rift. Because you, you don't want to release generation two Rift that works, that, that cuts down the experience. Like every game that came out for Rift has to play better on Rift two. Right. You can't have some games that work worse on Rift two. Um, so if you go inside out tracking and put those sensors, um, on a rift is it going to play all of those games at just the same quality it, it, oculus facebook seems to be saying we're going to do it they seem to be confident and me as a consumer as a journalist trying to help uh people out there make decisions for themselves we won't know the answer to that question until we get extended time yeah uh, with the actual consumer unit so it's going to be a while before we get that answer um I don't think we have any lingering questions. I think we've done a pretty good job of answering everything. If there are any final questions, uh, go ahead and ask them now before we um, close up. Um, but uh, just, uh, I guess we can start wrapping up now. I think um, other, other than Quest at Oculus Connect, I got to play um, some Rift games. I played Stormland, Defector, Vox Machina, um, Space Junkies, Echo Combat, um, there's another one in there that I'm missing. I can't remember. Um, and I played a few Go games. Um, there's so I mean, there's there's content coming. It's it's all pretty cool. Um, but on the, uh, the highlight of OC5, without a doubt, is obviously the quest. I mean, that goes without saying. I think the quest is um, on everyone's radar now. This is um, the most excited I have personally been for a new headset, I think, to date. Um, as, you know, someone that is you know traditionally in my background is gaming i was very excited for psvr i still love it um i use my rift all the time too but the quest that i mean it's, so, it's a game changer so i i, I 100 agree and keep in mind that we try to stay as skeptical as possible about the technologies we try and the headsets we try and we integrate VR into our lives in a very um, holistic way. I mean, we like spending time outside of VR, so it helps balance how much we want. It helps we're not, we're not dying to spend all of our time in VR, so um, that gives us a balanced view of um, how useful or, or how this is going to find itself into everyday life. And Beat Saber, Super Hot. Uh, Marvel Powers, these games we really, really, really want to play. Like genuinely, as gamers, as people who enjoy entertainment and fun, those things on this headset so should be a game changer, what should do you, be amazing. What do you think will be the first like big marquee social VR app on Quest? Do you think it'll be Rec Room? Do you think they're, or is it just gonna be Altspace again? Because Go already has Altspace. Rec Room. Um, you think before all space? I, th um, I feel like Rec Room would I mean, that would be just huge for Quest to have an app like that that you could take anywhere with you wirelessly. That is like yeah. Well, I mean, it's 
Yeah. Let's, let's talk about Google while we've got, well, before we wrap this up, I want to mention Someone actually Google. has a question here. They yeah. want to know if we're covering the Made by Google event. Um, that's the one in a couple weeks, I think. Okay. Uh, the next event coming up is um, the Magic Leap Conference. Yeah, um, LeapCon, LA. is that what they call it? LeapCon. LeapCon. Um, and, and Leap is an acronym, I think. It's like learn, engage, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's how it, it's an acronym. everything I, is Everything is an acronym, and I don't no. care to memorize what any <laughs> acronym stands for anymore because it doesn't help. Yeah. Um, no, so LeapCon is the next big one, and I'm, I'm re you, you actually tried Angry Birds, right? Oh yeah, I played Angry Birds on Magic League. That was my first experience of Magic League. What was what was it um, like, David? Let's Angry look. Birds. I thought was cool. It was Angry Birds in VR on a table. It was really neat. VR, you said VR or AR. It was Angry Birds on a table. It was awesome. I thought it was really cool. However, Magic League doesn't work with glasses. It was an awful experience for me. <laughs> I am nearly blind without glasses. I had to literally squint, and I still could barely see where the birds were. I, I asked him, what was it like? Uh, so you tried Angry Birds and, and Magic League, and what did you say? It's Angry Birds and Magic League was like, what yeah. I would call you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And it hurt. Whatever. Me, and, and you couldn't see it. <laughs> yeah, I had to squint. Um, let's see. Um, uh, what about the invasion of privacy with the headset mapping your house? Very, very good concern. That is. That's it's, interesting. So, Valid. So it, that's from Lightbringer on YouTube. By yeah. The way. Um, we asked this question of Oculus regarding the way the sensors worked with the Oculus Rift. And um, the sensors that you install around your room with Oculus Rift are essentially webcams. Mm -hmm. uh, except that I think we we had a story on that uh, like a couple years ago about if if you can invert it uh, even with the lights off and it can like see everything. It can still see everything. Yeah, so yeah. Um, it it can still get those sensors can still get a good picture of your of your room. And the only thing that's fooling the system into not seeing it as a standard webcam is a piece of code that tells it it's not a webcam. So like. A hacker can easily go in and turn it into a webcam and you know easily right I mean mm -hmm. they have to get through all your other security so the way we, we presented that story was uh, as far as we could tell um, we don't have any indication to think VR that, that a VR headset is any less secure than anything else it's just that you are in you are putting cameras in your house um, Invasion of privacy is a tricky term. Um, we need to be cognizant of how Facebook uses this data um, mm -hmm. and how much ownership we have of that data. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk about Google, truthfully, um, was because I know Microsoft, I know Apple, and I know Amazon are all working on VR-related ideas. But it only seems to me that Google has worked hard enough and long enough to position itself as a as a competitor in the standalone space for Facebook. And you know, Tilt Brush, Blocks, Job Simulator, Vacation Simulator, um, Rick and Morty, those are the only pieces of content that aren't owned by Facebook that I can say can anchor a platform yeah. in competition to Facebook. Um, yes, there's all these great indie games that have been built, but I would expect all of those indie games to go to as many platforms as they can they can get them onto. It's these tentpole um, projects that are being funded over multiple years by the companies themselves. That yeah, like Oculus's relationship with Bethesda uh, Insomniac. Games. Bethesda games. Yeah. Are Bethesda games going to come to Oculus Quest, or are they only going to come to Google's system? You see, it's an interesting question because. In my head, I would imagine a game like Skyrim can't work on Quest. However, if you think about it, Skyrim launched on PS3. And the Snapdragon 835 is about on par with the PS3 in terms of processing power. I mean, I think it is feasible that that game could potentially work on Quest. If that came to Quest, that... Oh my god. So, so like, there's that, and then what if that game comes only to Google's standalone? because Bethesda uh, has this legal problem with, with Oculus, with Oculus right. and Facebook. So like, 
if if Google is going to mount a good resistance, I mean, a, a, a competitive resistance to Facebook's standalone headset, they need to start rallying the content and spending quite a bit on the content um, to ready that system in competition. Otherwise, Facebook is going to get more power over our personal data. Like that's that's more or less the reason I'm getting into this because. Um, the best way to protect our privacy is to have a robust market where it's in the interests of multiple partners, of, of multiple parties, to protect uh, the privacy of individual users. That said, uh, those four cameras that are on the corners of the headset, that arena demo that we've been playing, th those cameras are looking for your body movements. So those cameras are it's possible for them to figure out your arm and your leg movements and whether you're crouching. And that's, that's a fingerprint. That is a fingerprint of who you are. That's an individ that, that identifies you as an individual against all other individuals. So like we're talking about something that could be used as a next generation um, cookie, right? Is your body movements could be your identifying marker in the future. Mm -hmm. Stanford is holding a closed door session, I believe it's in November, with industry leaders. I asked if I could come. They said it's closed to press. It's closed door. But I do expect uh, many industry leaders to be at that Stanford Privacy Summit uh, to discuss this very issue. Um, I heard, a, I saw a question about Elon Musk. I have no idea what Elon Musk is up to. Um, Palmer Lucky probably knows what Elon Musk is up to. <laughs> Um, but we don't. Okay, um, so I think uh, that, that pretty much covers everything. We're we're both very excited for Quest, right? Like that's not just an exagger no, exaggeration. I'm genuinely like so. That's what I was trying. I wanted to explain. It's like I love all the headsets I had, but I'm always making apologies for them. Yeah. Right. I, that, that's a good point. Like for me, if I have someone over to try VR, you know, they never tried VR before. And I say, oh, hey, you got to try Beat Saber. This is amazing. Try it out. And they try it on the Rift. They're like, oh, that's so cool. How much is it? Oh, the game's only like 20 bucks, but you got to get a Rift. That's 400 You have to have a gaming PC. That's 800 And they go, and they're like, $1,000? That's not that's too much. Okay, well, here, try the PSVR. PSVR is really cool. Oh, but don't turn around and don't move. You can only exactly, stand. Exactly, right? And uh, if your controllers float away, just shake them for a second. They'll be fine. Like It's like, oh, okay, but I have an Xbox. Okay, well, you can't have that. Here, try Go. Goes awesome. It's great. And then they leave, don't right? stand up and don't move. Just sit still, and then it's awesome. This is the first headset where I feel like I'm not going to have to give those explanations. Yeah. I'm going to say I can give it to someone, yeah. and they can play whatever it is. And then when they take it off, I 400 bucks, you can have it exactly that, exactly. And I think a lot of people are going to like, you know, they they have to smile uh -huh. after, and then you explain everything to them, all the economics and all the limitations, and then and then the frowns start. They're like. Oh, that's too much. <laughs> yeah. I think when we tell them four hundred dollars after they experience, and they go, "Wait, there's no computer," and I go, "No, there's no computer." And they're gonna go. Yeah, I mean, for example, okay. like a PS4 is like four hundred bucks. You still need a TV though. <laughs> you don't with the Quest. Just saying. It's true. So, like, yeah, our gen, our, our excitement is genuine for this device because, like, we've been at this for years now, and we've always been making those apologies. And for the first time, we've seen evidence that those apologies are going to go away within nine months. And also, like, some people might think, oh, well, there's already been six off, you know, standalone headsets, blah, blah, blah. But it, they, they don't have the content. You know, this is going to be an Oculus-powered device. The Oculus Home Store has almost three years of great content that's been developed, and a lot of it's going to get ported over. Well, so going back, Full Circle was super hot. Like, mm hmm it's it's just legitimately fun to get into this. So like, Super Hot Two, assuming that they're building it, it should be on standalone first. Like, mm -hmm. uh, when they build those levels for Super Hot Two, they should do it with the freedom of no wire in mind, and then like, pare down the levels that suck, uh, because you now have a wire. Like that's that yeah. particular game should be architected with with standalone in mind in the future. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that's good. Um, 
I appreciate you guys stopping by, checking out the stream. Thank you. Um, all the videos that we've been playing, most of those are on our YouTube channel. Um, UploadVR.com is where you can check out and read our full impressions of uh, the quest, of all those demos we played, all the games you're seeing, even this one, Final Assault. That's going to be a Rift and Vive game. I have an impression of that one up on the site. It's an RTS. That was a fun one. Um, yeah, I mean, everything Oculus Connect, you can find tons of stuff at Upload VR. We're going to have more stuff next week as we go through interviews and, um, you know, kind of digest things more. Um, but, yeah, so thank you guys so much for checking out the stream, whether it be on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Mixer, or Periscope, wherever you came from. Uh, thank you. So I appreciate it, and uh, it was it was a good chat. Yep. Not a, a lot of good questions. I'm, I'm at HMLTN on Twitter, so if you have any questions for us, David's uh, right there. And my handle's and, right. Uh, right there. And I'm at, I'm at HMLTN on Twitter, so uh, that's just my last name, Hamilton, without the vowels. So if you have any questions, let us know. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Bye.